tourist lookout point, but long time ago, you know, it was a watch tower. Then you got here, Abichaja. the mama. <laughs> <laughs> She's the mother of the island. She, well, this lady here is the grandmother, then the next one is the wife, and then you see here, she is the... <laughs> She's the sister-in-law. <laughs> yes. And he is, this is the person by himself, he said. And he stays away from all the women. Yes, all the women. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he's the most important man. That's why he keeps staying here. Yeah. Look at tower. Look at point tower. Look. This is the taxi. Look and this at is this. the Mercedes <laughs> 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 here. What are you looking in here? I love this. it. The traditional shape, you know, or typical boats we got before. They haven't any decoration. You can realize we made them just of reeds and then we got a straw before to tie to wrap them. What you see about a new one here, you can see another version. And then it's got nylon to wrap it, reeds, you know, and then the shape. In particular, you can see it's got a contiki shape like the boat is right here. It's the same one. But you can realize why and several of you probably wondered to know why do we call the lake titicaca I, I mean the right way might not be you know titicaca it should be titicaca is that a way they call or some of the local people it depends the meaning they might say titicala titi might mean kuma and kaka might mean rock rock gray hair you know uh, any stone so what the people call this is puma gray puma rock Puma Stone Lake is the meaning of Titi Kaka. It's more about, you know, our, you know, religion. Not about the color, not about, you know, the nature. No, just about the religion. You can see here, this is Titi. I got a Puma here shape, a Puma head for a nice boat. And I can see here a couple of them, man and, you know, woman. And then you can see here a little house. Is this they call now the modern Mercedes Benz? See, they got this. They need to fix the island because someday they float away. The lake tomorrow is getting rough. The winds are quite strong here and the islands can float away, you know, another 500, 600 feet. So we need to fix the anchor. This, you know, it's the anchor of the island. There is a pole in the reeds. The poles, you know, are tied to the islands and the islands they used to tie, you know, nylon ropes. They are much thicker than the normal one, than the regular one. So you got another here, you know, it's not possible nowadays to find, you know, a uh, pole can be 60 feet tall or, you know, even 40 feet. So we can have all of these, you know, are only about 8 to 12 feet. What we do, we go in the reeds where the lake is much shallow, much more than this, and we just go and fix this in the reeds where it's shallow. Then I got a rope. It's coming all the way in the water to the island. And then, you know, I just make sure I will tie to this, you know, or I just put a rock on the rope because it keeps the rope, the rope, I mean, down below, away of the propellers, the boats, and any damage. Is that what I do? So you can see here, this is a rock, and then they got a pole, and then we have for this island, not one, two, three. They might have at least another 10 of them just to fix the island. But still, tomorrow or the next month is August, you know, when the weather is getting very windy and heavy storm here the islands float away the next day you can sleep here and you can wake up i mean farther away the next day what we do you know is we go with a boat and we start pulling the island or push the island if you cannot do that because we don't have money so we just five or six of the tough men you know they're gonna be pulling the island back to the same place and to re-anchor the island is that what they do see it's not just amazing just think about how hard or how difficult might be the way they do for living here. Is that what we call here surviving here? We build an island in how long time? Or how long do we need to build an island? To make the whole thing here takes six months, at least six months for about six to seven families. But if they are less, obviously can take about a year, one year around to build a new island. Is that what we do? How long do the island last? Or do all of them? The islands, it depends, you know, how thick is the island, and it depends also how deep is the lake. But I can tell you something. Some of the islands can be like this. This is the bottom of the lake right here. You're gonna see. 
and then this is, you know, where the islands are on top. It's 60 feet. One island at the beginning, a new island is about 10 feet. So let's say just as much as this, no more. So, you know, the islands keep sinking. They keep adding once a month, they put more reeds, more totora on top. We call local name for the reeds, totora. So once a month, you keep adding. Is the island growing up? No, the island is growing down, we say. But actually you call the island is sinking. In about 10 years, for about 10 years, an island got about 10 feet thick. In 20 years, the island is getting 20 feet. In 30 years, in 40 years, in 50, and in 60 years, the island is going to touch the bottom of the lake. And the island becomes not anymore floating. As soon as it touches the bottom, it's going to become a real, a natural island because it's fixed and because it's not floating anymore. So you see, as long as 40, 50, or 60 years before they touch the bottom, they live, they last that much time. After that, you know, we have to think. Before it touches the bottom, it's much better to build a new island. So let's say that after 30, 40 years, they're just planning to build a new island. Before the new generation is coming, they just plan to build a new island. How many generations can live on one island? If it lasts, you know, about 40, 50 years, I guess about three at least. So the parents, the children, and the grandchildren of them, they're gonna be living on that island. Maybe the great grand, you know, they need to build a new island and they're gonna pass a move to the next one. Is that what they do? So that is the purpose why, you know, some of the people, when they come around, they say, do the islands really float? The best way you can do, you know, to realize if it floats or not, go to the edge and just look at through, you know, around it, and you're gonna see. The whole island is floating. But you know, even the tourists cannot see. Maybe from a boat farther away, you can see the island is floating. They're gonna show to you something. You might realize that. That's a jalapeno. We just, you know,